We'll start with the Mustard C49S curved caddy size 10. This is a uh, skating caddy pattern called a Screaming Banshee by uh, Charlie Craven, I think. But there's a few ways of tying this, but this is the way I like to tie it. It's a nice little pattern. We'll just attach a bit of tying thread at the front. I use Dyneema, of course, tying thread for all my deer hair flies. Now, we're using yearling elk. This is from Nature Spirit in the United States. It's absolutely fantastic deer hair. So we need a little bunch of that. When you're cleaning this hair, now it's very important that you use long hair if you want to tie this pattern efficiently. So we take the long hairs, take a bunch like this, we take the long hairs and we'll pull out, holding the tips of the long hairs, pull out all the short hairs and the under fur. We just want long hairs in this. If you have uh, short hairs in it, it's going to make it more difficult to tie. Then we'll stack these. There we are. Now this front wing, as I call it, should be about as long as the hook shank itself. Now we don't want this to spin around the hook shank. So what we do is we go round just the hair once, like so. Then we can pull it down, close into the hook eye and then we can go round once and then twice and then we tighten yeah and then we can just lock that off don't let go of the hair behind and then we just work our way back and when we get to about there make a few turns just to lock it off and we need our scissors and we want to remove about half of that at an angle there we go take hold of this again make sure that your threads flat spin it anti-clockwise and then we'll carry on back now lift the hair up at the back as we go into the bend because we want all this hair like a humpy on top of the hook shank not underneath otherwise you'll get the hair when you fold it over to make the hump it'll go on the underside of the hook shank so keep that up and we'll just tack that in and then we can go back up just tying down the deer hair securing it This is a skating pattern as I said so you don't really want to tie this deer hair in too tight because this will add buoyancy and you see how that is now there is no deer hair on the underside so that's perfect. What we need now is some pearl tinsel this is a Vivas pearl tinsel so we'll just take a length of that tie this in at the tail base and we'll go up when we get to about there we can just flip that over again secure it so it's not going to pull out tie that down and then we go back up again towards the front wing okay I take our and get hold of it tinsel. Now what we want is a tapered tinsel body all the way up more or less. Just wrap this on. And then once we get to the front we can come back a bit just to give it more of a taper. And forward again. And this is pretty robust tinsel so there's not much chance of it breaking. Go back a little bit more like so. 
and then forward once again before we tie it off. There we are. Don't want to take that hair with me. Keep all that out of the way. Make a couple of turns forward, fold your tinsel over to lock it down again and go back a little bit. There we go. And we'll just oops, trim that off. Excellent. So you can see now that's got a nice pearl body on that and as I said the elk hair over the front is not coming under. So what we need now, I uh, what I like to use here is some little bit of brown eye stubbing. Don't need much here. forward catch that in and wrap it a bit tighter keep it nice and tight as you go in there we are that's excellent then another bunch uh, a little larger than this bunch of elk hair and again stack it got all the points nice and even there so this is the split wing and it wants to be a little longer than that wing so again I don't want this to go on the underside of the hook shank so we can lift this up and go around once and just pull it down and then once twice and then tighten and flare all that up like so there we are then we'll lift all this up including the front wing and we'll just lock that off with a few turns at the front of the hook eye very good now the advantage of having the long hair both at the back and at the front is that you can grab hold of this when you're trimming it off without taking any of the front or the split wing. So what we want to do now is go tight into this, holding everything tight and down and we make one cut. So you get a like a, an elk hair uh, uh, caddis head. Trim those down a little bit. There we go. So, what we do now is, I'll just adjust that vice. We want to take hold again of all the hump hairs at the back that will form the, the shell back. And we want to split the wing about, of course, half and half. Just lift that up into it. Pull that through. Now we want to try and get all these fibres going straight not crossing each other got one hair but we'll sort that out there afterwards that's excellent so I'll just go over there and over there I'll have to pull that down to the side and then we'll tighten that up for the back pull all the wing fibers back tighten that down and then we go forward again just to lock it off while we cut this and 
get hold of most of the fibres that you can and again trim it off close to the last just in there but let's trim those down there's one there that shouldn't have come through just get rid of Straighten out the split wing. Excellent. Then we need just a tiny bit more of ice dubbing. We go forward. under the front wing behind the hook eye and we'll just tie that off with a whip finish keep these airs out of the way and then we'll remove that very good And there we have it, the Screaming Banshee. It's a lovely, you can see the pearl body and the little bit of ice dubbing underneath. Uh, but it pushes a lot of water when you strip it. And it's a great little, uh, not only a skating caddis pattern, but uh, an attractor. Give it a go. Thanks for watching.